After the failure of the Creatures of the Night album and tour, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley knew that they needed a drastic change in order to continue. In the meantime, they reteamed with producer Michael James Jackson for the new Kiss album, Lick It Up. But for the album's release, Paul suggested that it was time for Kiss to take off their signature makeup. The band had been backed into a corner, and they had no real other option. KISS teamed up with the then-recently-born MTV to unveil their faces for the first time in an exclusive interview that was accompanied by a music video for the new album's title track. Lick It Up was released on September 18, 1983. This is a great cover. It's simple, but perfect for the message the band was sending. The band looks great. I wish they wore these clothes as opposed to the ones they actually wore on stage. Written by Paul and Vinnie Vincent, Rick Derringer played the guitar solo on this. It's clearly meant to be a sister song to Creatures of the Night with a similar chugga chugga riff. And it works. This is a fantastic way to open the record. The guitar work is really tight. Paul's vocals are excellent and the chorus is killer. I love this song. In terms of production, I think this is an improvement on Creatures of the Night. While Eric's drums aren't as prominent, the overall mix is better. I like the guitar tone better and Gene's bass is more clear in the mix. And his bass playing on Exciter is really good. This was written by Gene and Vinny. I like the main guitar riff a lot, and the bass adds a nice heaviness to the sound. The lyrics are great too, this is a really good song. Gene really pushed himself singing-wise, going for some high notes he wouldn't typically go for, but it works. The only thing I don't like is Vinny's guitar solo. Written by Paul and Vinny, this is a perfect song. Paul was going through a rough breakup at the time, and writing the new album was his catharsis. In this instance, he wanted to write a feel-good song to get him out of his funk. Lick It Up is brilliantly catchy and so much fun. Paul nails the vocals. One of my favorite elements of the song is Eric's drum beat. For most rock tunes, the standard kind of drum beat is 1 and 3 on the bass drum, 2 and 4 on the snare. It's a little more complicated than that, obviously, but that's the general rule of thumb. On this song, Eric also hits the floor tom along with the snare on beats 2 and 4. It makes those beats a lot more powerful. It's a simple but really cool trick. This was written by Gene and Vinny. Later, on the Animalized tour, Eric would sing it when they played it live. And while Gene's vocals are solid on the record, I wish they would have let Eric do it. That live version with Eric singing is much better, and it's a waste that they didn't let him sing more. He was a really talented singer, so why not let him sing? The answer is ego. The question was rhetorical. The guitar on this is really fun, and I love Gene's bass line. It's a cool song. However, again... I don't like Vinny's solo. Written by Paul and Vinny, I like the main riff a lot. But other than that, the song doesn't do much for me. I don't really have any feelings about it. It exists. Written by Eric, Paul, Vinny, and Gene, this is the second of only three times that a Kiss song was written by all four members of the band. Eric wrote the bulk of the song and then brought it to the other guys in the band who each added something. Paul's contribution was the verses, which he made a bit of a rap. Eric was apparently horrified when he heard what Paul had done to it. I do think Eric should have sang this. It was, by Paul's own admission, mostly his song. However, I do love the song. The guitar riff is great, and the bass line is really cool. I love the big, rebellious pre-chorus, especially the lyrics. The chorus is great, and I like Vinny's solo. Written by Paul and Vinny, this is my favorite track on the record. It's a song that deals directly with Paul's breakup at the time. It's meant to convey the feeling that you have when you've been dumped, that you're irreplaceable and the person that dumped you is never going to find someone as good as you. It's a complete fantasy, like it's a coping mechanism, and the song revels in that escapism, which I like a lot. It's a great melody, and Paul's singing is top-notch. (laughs) 
This was written by Gene. The main riff is great, and Gene kills it on bass. I love the pre-chorus. This is a really fun song. However, I don't like Vinny's solo. Written by Gene, this is the worst song on the record. I like the simple bass line, but that's about it. I don't know if this was based on an actual event, or if it's just a hypothetical situation. The lyrics are from the point of view of a man who was cheated on and wants revenge. Nikki Six of Motley Crue wrote a lyrically similar kind of song called You're All I Need. He was convinced that a girl he was dating at the time was cheating on him, so he wrote a song practically threatening to murder her. In both cases, it's hard to take them seriously because these are womanizing rock stars. It feels like the pot calling the kettle black, especially in Gene's case. This is the man that bragged four decades about sleeping with over 4,000 women and keeping creepy Polaroids of them. The same man who refused to marry the mother of his children for like 20 years and cheated on her. He absolutely cannot sell the anger of someone being cheated on. He sounds like a dumb hypocrite. Additionally, what does the chorus even mean? Dance all over your face? What? Is he implying some kind of actual act of violence? Because that'd be fucked up. Or is it supposed to be sexual in nature? This song feels like a first draft. Where was Vinny on this? He was a really good lyricist, and this song kind of needs his help. Hell, where was anyone? Who okayed this? This is easily one of my least favorite Kiss songs. I hate it. This was written by Gene and Vinny. It's a melodic and fun anthem. I like the song a lot. It's a little cheesy, but it works. However, and I hate to sound like a broken record for how many times I've said this, I don't like Vinny's solo. Taking off the makeup caught people's attention and combined with the catchy single in Lick It Up, the album performed much better than Unmasked, The Elder, and Creatures of the Night. It peaked at number 24 and went gold by the end of 1983. The album was certified platinum at the end of 1990. The first single, Lick It Up, peaked at number 66 while the second, All Hell's Breaking Loose, failed to chart. Both songs featured Escape from New York inspired music videos that are pretty cool. The tour and support of the album was also more of a success but still not to the level that Kiss was used to. There were a few cost cutting measures such as recycling the stage from the Creatures of the Night tour due to how poorly the Creatures tour had done. Kiss did not automatically regain their former glory with this album as Gene and Paul sometimes claim but it was a push in the right direction. Personally, I really like the album. The thing that is coolest about it, to me, is that for the first time in a while, it was Kiss being a band. There were no outside writers, and Exciter was the only track to feature an outside musician. Most of the songs are really good. There's one bad song, Dance All Over Your Face, and one filler, Give Me More. And personally, Vinny's lead guitar work has no appeal. I find most of his solos on this record really obnoxious. He was invaluable as a songwriter for the band, but I never thought he worked as their lead guitarist. Despite all of that, this is a really solid album. The songs that are great are standouts and showcase a hyper-focused band with hunger and fire. <laughs>